Good evening, your forever family. I'm a faithful believer in Jesus Christ, saved by his wonderful grace from addiction. My name is Jim. How's everybody doing? I hope you're all doing well as we're back to stage one, being sheltered in place in home. I know it's getting a bit frustrating. It is for me, and I'm sure it is for many of us, but you know, we just gotta remember this to remain faithful that, that God's got this and he's before us and he's behind us and everything that, that's going on. So we just gotta continue to put our faith and trust in him, amen? With that, let's go ahead and bow our heads and we'll pray. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this evening. Lord, uh, again, Lord, I just ask, Lord, that um, Lord, you just continue to watch over us through this time of this COVID-19 uh, thing that's just been going on, it, it seems like forever. But Lord, as I just spoke earlier, Lord, I know you are before us and you're behind us in everything that's taking place. Lord, just uh, continue just to build our strength in you, especially our sobriety and and uh, just our recovery, Lord, as we're sheltered in place in home and just, uh, just in this trying time, Lord, I just pray for an extra measure of your, your, your favor upon everybody, Lord, that, uh, Lord, you would just see us through this time. And Lord, we just give you just praise and honor for all that you're doing, Lord. That, Lord, even the behind the scenes that we don't see what you're doing, Lord, we just put our hope and our faith in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, let's do Rock of Ages.
Thanks, everybody, for singing those with me. God is good. Amen. Hey, at this time, why don't you uh, join with me and say the eight celebrate recovery principles in the Beatitudes? Let's go. I realize I'm not God. I admit that I am powerless to control my tendencies to do the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. Happy are those who know that they are spiritually poor. Earnestly believe that God exists and that I matter to him and that he has the power to help me recover. Happy are those who mourn, for they, is, they shall be comforted. Consciously choose to commit all my life and will to Christ's care and control. 
Happy are the meek. Openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. Happy are the pure in heart. Voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove my character defects. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. Evaluate all my relationships, offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me, and make amends for harm I've done to others, except when to do so would harm them or others. Happy are the merciful, happy are the peacemakers. Reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer in order to know God and His will for my life and to gain the power to follow His will. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. Yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others, both by my example and by my words. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. Amen. Hey everybody, welcome to Friday night. So excited you're here. Uh, enjoyed our time singing with Jim tonight. We. I uh, have a special guest person is going to share with us, but before I introduce that person, just want to let you know we are very close. In fact, we got the okay to move into Lassen Street, so as soon as we get the okay to meet together again, our next Celebrate Recovery is going to be at 65 South Lassen in the new Celebrate Recovery room. It's going to be amazing, so uh, we're looking forward to that. So uh, anyway... Um, let me introduce you to our guest tonight, and um, she's going to pray for you in a minute, right? So anyway, we got uh, uh, Carly Bates is here, and she's going to share with us tonight. She's going to uh, take us through our lesson, and so I'm pleased to have her. Uh, so I know you're excited to see her as well. So anyway, uh, here's Carly. Good morning. <laughs> Well, okay. Welcome. Everybody's surprised. It's very good to be here tonight. I feel like I got my own uh, behind the scenes worship in person. Man, it was so hard not to sing and clap along uh, with Jim there. So thank you, Jim, for that. Um, I'm a little nervous right now, but I'm sure it'll shake off as we get going. Um, so with that, welcome forever family. I'm a faithful believer in Jesus Christ. My name is Carly Bates. And I am very grateful and privileged to be here tonight to be able to uh, present tonight's lesson. So before we do that, we're going to go ahead and go back to a little bit of last week. Oh, went back the wrong way. And last week was about AA Steps 8 and 9. We made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. We made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. <clears throat> now this um, collides with CR principle six, uh, which is evaluate all my relationships, offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me and make amends for harm I've done to others, except when to do so will harm them or others. Um, this one was tricky for me. I, I had a sponsor myself who got to guide me through um, some amends, some people I had on my list that I didn't really know whether I wanted to make amends to, so they helped guide me through that and, and also through prayer as well, because some I just didn't want to do, but <clears throat> I became willing. <laughs> um, let's see, there is much wreckage in our past. Yeah, we don't just get here by a good time. Um, I know myself, I've accumulated years of um, wreckage of the past, I guess is what we're going to call it. And um, in order to, to get through that, you know, I got to make this list. And for me, the list was made in my fourth step. In these situations, apologies won't do, but they are a place to start. Uh, my sponsor suggested that for me, it is not necessarily the word apology, but the word sorry that um, doesn't quite cut it. I know for myself, I've said sorry very many times. Um, and so in order to, to make an amends, it was just that. You know, I, I apologized for my part, my wrongs, 
and then I got to go into action and do the footwork to make sure that um, I didn't do those things again. An honest recovery calls for amends. Um, <laughs> in the recovery world, at least in my experience, where I've gotten to, um, I guess it's the accountability world, so to speak, in recovery, and, and you'll hear people say, honest program. You know, honest program is they're calling you out because they're doing something that's possibly not honest, and uh, it's good to have those people around even though we don't like to hear it sometimes. Um, why do we do amends? It can open up doors that were closed. Um, also, again, in my experience, being able to, to right my wrongs, um, I want to say at least half the people on my first round of steps, I still have relationships to this day. Um, I was able to, to admit the exact nature of my wrongs, and um, it was received well. I don't know how else to put it, but I'm grateful for that, for these steps for that. Um, today we get to live in harmony with each other, do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Romans 12, 16 through 18. We will not regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. We will comprehend the word serenity and we will know peace. That to me is so refreshing. Um, I've worked my steps in the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and um, as soon as I got there, I believe I cried because I could feel that inside, you know, by doing the work and getting into action and actually um, getting to make some face-to-face -face amends with some people and um, you know, not getting the door slammed in my face or, or getting punched in the face, um, just to be welcome and to receive that. To me, I truly believe that steps eight and nine is where uh, the, fru the true freedom really starts in recovery. Amends, paying back or making up for grievance or injury to change for the better or improve. To remove the faults or errors, to correct what was wrong, to better one's conduct, to reform. If we are painstaking about this phase, we, excuse me, of our development, we will be amazed before we are halfway through. We are going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. And that's the freedom that I was talking about. Um, as soon as you start removing that wreckage from your past, it's like, I like to use uh, like a trash can. You know, my trash can was full when I got here, maybe over full. I may have had three trash cans, you know, and, and by doing the footwork and putting pen to paper, um, I was able to empty that trash can. And so it's like now, because resentments don't stop just because you've been here for some time. Um, but now that, that trash can's empty and whenever something hits inside of it, you can hear it. And it lets you know like, oh, it might be time to, to do another uh, mini four step onto the amend step. This principle is about you doing the work of seeking forgiveness and extending forgiveness. Um, I too had some people on my list, like I had mentioned prior, that that I didn't want to make amends, or I had people who may have harmed me. And what I had learned is, um, if I wasn't willing to make those amends, then just to pray and ask for that willingness to come. And soon enough, it would, and it did for me. I also had people that had harmed me, that um, I got to learn how to forgive. And um, for me, it was only through the, the help of Jesus that I was able to do those things. And, um, you know, that unforgiveness, being able to hold on to that unforgiveness, too, is um, it also will hold you back in your program or it, it'll prolong the recovery. And that's my experience as well. Step nine, I made direct amends to such people wherever possible, confessing the truth is good for everybody. Excuses and blaming others is not part of this process. We are looking to be responsible for our past actions. CR principle six, I offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me and make amends for harm I've done to others. 
forgiveness, or excuse me, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amends is a two-way street. Have I done all I need to do to make this right? Um, again, for me, it's, it's very essential to have a sponsor. I could sit here and decide what I think I have done and then that could be good enough. Or I know um, I had tried to actually get out of an amends because I was too much in fear about it. And I tried to even tell my sponsor, you know, well, this is what was revealed to me. And I think that I'm good and I don't have to, I don't have to do it anymore. And, and she had let me know, no, you know, we had said in the beginning that we were willing to go to any lengths for our recovery. And, um, and so by doing so, I get to continue to move forward. The bottom line is that all, it's all for your well-being and peace of mind. Our past behaviors have been like a tornado destroying relationships and much more. In some cases, the damage is extreme. We've broken loving and trusted relationships as well as friendships. Making amends takes work and time. If it doesn't happen, the wreckage of the past stays. Um, this is another one where, in my experience, you know, with my children, I, I could become very easily, easily agitated and frustrated and, and just with whatever might have happened in my day. And I could bring that home and, and allow myself to be um, irritable and discontent with them. Um, and for this, for these steps, they've really helped me to become aware of those things and to ask Jesus for help on how to stay on my side of the street and not allow my behaviors to affect the people around me. And, and it's, it's an action step in the program. It's not Jesus is going to magically hit you on top of the head with a wand and it's going to happen. No, you get to you know, take the action and being coming aware that, hey, you might be moody today, so you know, at least let people know around you or just put yourself in check. It can be a daunting task, but something we must do. See our principle six, evaluate all my relationships, offer forgiveness to those who have hurt me and make amends for harm I've done to others except when to do so would harm them or others. Survey the damage and make a plan. We made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Step eight. Put that plan into action. We made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Step nine. Except when to do so will harm them or others. Use your head, common sense, and seek God's guidance. Again, this is really good where a sponsor um, or a spiritual advisor or sponsor uh, will come in handy. Uh, if you're not sure about it, pray about it, reach out and ask for help and, and they can give you guidance through that. If you roll your eyes at making amends, it tells us we all need to know about your recovery. <laughs> That's funny. Making amends, I could care less. How's that working? Happy are the peacemakers, Matthew 5, 9, but you don't know that. Because you have found a better way to work your recovery. I'm sorry, please forgive me is a good start. But part of making amends is changing the unacceptable behavior for good. Making amends has a lot to do with justice. Making the wrong right. Making amends is seeing that it doesn't happen again. Making amends will help to ease the tension and bad blood. Making amends is good for you. What if we can't go to find them? Well, we can seek out a family member, 
We can get a phone number or make a call. We can write a letter, get an address, acts of kindness towards others, reconcile through prayer, tell God what you would tell them. What gets in our way? Our pride and ego, our fears and embarrassment. Easy to say, let's let bygones be bygones. The lie, the time is not right. I did that one many times. <laughs> Can't find them because we didn't look. What do we need from God? Well, we can ask him for courage, um, a sense of timing, appropriate words, and humility. The response, good or bad, does not determine whether we continue to make amends to others. Each amends is taking another step to keeping our side of the street clean. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Making amends brings that good for our recovery. Wow, I guess we're done. All right, well, I want to thank you all for showing up and tuning in on this Friday night. And again, exciting times to come. Uh, 65 South Lassen Street. Hopefully we'll be meeting there soon. And um, again, super blessed and grateful for this opportunity to be he able to be here in front of all of you, um, nervous and all that. Um, I say I'm a lot too, so thank you for listening to that. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Randy for the serenity prayer. Thank you all again. Right on. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys, let us read the serenity prayer together here, if I click the right button. And uh, here we go. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, Taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will. So that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me close this in prayer real quick and uh, we'll, uh, we'll call it a week. All right. God, thank you for... This week together, God, thank you for Carly coming in and, and sharing with us. And we just pray uh, this week that you would keep us safe. We pray that you would keep us out of harm's way. And let us continue to seek your will, God, until we can get together together again and, and uh, do this in person. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah.